one year ago, this graphics card was released, the RTX 3050. During its debut, it came with 8GB of VRAM, it performed slower than the RTX 2060, and was supposed to be at $249 MSRP. And even at 2023, that $249 MSRP seemed to remain in the lands of fantasy. Anyway, in this video, we're going to see how this basic RTX 3050 performs in our competitive games like Warzone 2, Apex Legends, Fortnite, Valorant, and PUBG. Let's see if this card is a good option for NVIDIA users. We'll be testing this card using our Ryzen 5800 X3D setup. Latest drivers were used at the time of recording. Rebar has been enabled and everything shown here is captured using our capture card so there is no performance loss. And lastly, this video is not sponsored in any way boys so you can assure that our results here are not biased. Okay, let's kick things off with Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 Synthetic Benchmark. So this is the same engine used on Warzone 2 and let's start off with 1080p native and 1080p with DLSS quality turned on. And right off the bat, we can already see that our RTX 3050 is heavily bottlenecked on these competitive settings. Even with DLSS turned on, the RTX 3050 is not strong enough to pull through. With DLSS, we can see that there is definitely significant improvement over the 1080p native performance. Our FPS is now over 100 with 1% 1 lows now at about 90 plus FPS. This is actually pretty good. Now let's try this again but this time let's add FSR ultra quality in the mix. So FSR boys is AMD's open source upscaling. This is FSR 1.0 version which uses a simpler upscaling approach versus the LSS. The good thing about FSR is that anyone can use this technology. However, image quality in FSR 1.0 is inferior compared to the LSS. It's just unfortunate that the better versions of FSR have not been implemented on Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. So from this disk, we can definitely say that the LSS leads the result and will be used using this on our main gameplay benchmark now. Why is this so? Well, DLS is upscales from 720p resolution while FSR upscales from a much higher resolution so the results would favor DLSS. Okay, let's carry on with the real world Warzone 2 gameplay. There is a big difference between the benchmark and Almazra. The Warzone map definitely is much more GPU demanding as it's much more bigger with multiple objects in it. Similar to our last card review, we've enabled the metrics average FPS 1% and 0.1% lows here. As mentioned figures on these metrics should not be used to compare a different gameplay because these metrics are only useful if you're comparing it to the same run like our synthetic test that we've done earlier. And 0.1% lows can be ignored in this case as usually it's related to server issues and instability and that would cause this figure to drop really hard. As always, we would recommend you monitor the frame time charts and this is the time interval between each frame and would give you a better visual interpretation if our player is experiencing any stutters in game. The more erratic this chart is, the more stutter the player is experiencing. Now similar with our benchmark comparison earlier, the RTX 3050 is definitely bottlenecked here. It's maxed out pulling around 100 watts of power and using VRAM of at least 7 gigabytes. Frame times does have those micro stutters and you can see that reflected in the 1% lows. There is a huge gap between the 1% lows and the average FPS. Now CPU performance is running up to 4450 MHz with PBO turned on. And using 80 watts of CPU power, RAM usage is quite good and only at around 12 gigabytes. The Gulag does seem to perform better here. This is because it's a much smaller confined space and with our FPS reaching even around 130. However, frame times do still spike to more than 8 milliseconds. So usually standard for competitive gaming would have at least 8 milliseconds or lower stable frame times. Now moving into a more urban environment, performance is more or less the same. We still have those micro stutters on our frame times. With DLSS, our long range visibility does suffer and will add difficulty in spotting enemies from afar. Overall, the gameplay experience with the RTX 3050 in Warzone 2 is okay, playable, but obviously not the best in terms of competitive experience. Let's move on to Apex Legends. Like before, we are using competitive settings here based off album performance settings. And like Warzone, the RTX 3050 is maxed out here at 99%. However, GPU power is now reaching 
over 120 watts. GPU is still cool though at around 65 degrees Celsius with VRAM at least than 4 gigabytes. Our frame rates are pretty good in this game though, sometimes reaching over 200 on closed scenarios and over 150 on open areas. What I like about this game really is that how optimized it is. Look at that frame time boys, it's pretty straight and stable. Now our CPU performance here is more or less the same, pushing at 4450 MHz at more than 70 watts, although now reaching 70 degrees Celsius. Let's go through some heavy action scenarios here and see how it continues to stress our card. It's definitely maxing itself out at 100% with those fire effects. However, frame time still remains stable and on this game, the RTX 3050 is definitely viable. You obviously wouldn't get higher than 200 FPS, but you would still be competitive using the RTX 3050. Let's proceed with Fortnite. Similar to Warzone, let's start things off with synthetic benchmarks here comparing all three APIs, DX11, DX12, and performance mode. Now, running these three modes, we can already see some clear differences between the three. The 0.1% lows on these synthetic tests are really bad. You can see the huge gap uh, between all three metrics. Now, DX12 and DX11 modes, as always, has maxed out our RTX 3050. Now, unlike Chapter 3, Chapter Chapter 4 now requires more GPU demand on DX11 and DX12 API because Fortnite is now using the Unreal Engine 5.1. Performance mode didn't max out on the GPU usage while the others were all at 99%. From this comparison, you can definitely see that performance mode brings out the most FPS versus the other two APIs, although there is a bigger gap between the 1% and the 0.1% lows. Alright, let's move on with performance mode for our gameplay benchmark. And as previously mentioned, I would disregard the 0.1% lows boys because this is mostly related to server issues. Like the synthetic disk, our GPU usage remains around 80% and it's actually cool at 60 degrees. GPU power does go up to 130 watts on some settings. Now, we're not using as much VRAM here because this is performance mode and only less using less than 2 gigabytes. The interesting part here is that our CPU usage is almost 50%, even at 44 100 megahertz and this is reflected by that insane frame rate that we are getting going over 500 fps in closed areas and around 400 fps outside the frame times for the most part seems pretty straight although you do get those small stutters and you can see that in how it jumps from one millisecond and all the way up to four milliseconds ram usage here is low slightly over nine gigabytes of system ram use the rtx 3050 is definitely good for Fortnite performance mode. Now, if you're a competitive Fortnite gamer, this is actually a viable choice. Of course, Fortnite's game coding and server stability is actually a totally different topic. And if you are recording while gaming, that may also have an effect on your overall gaming experience. So just take note of that one. And before we proceed, boys, if you find our testings helpful and you'd like to see more, please subscribe to the channel. We would really like to grow the channel so we can do more of these tests. Okay, let's move on to Valorant. Now, we normally don't do synthetic tests with Valorant, but you guys have been asking for it, so here we are. We've tested 1080p competitive and low settings here. We've also added 1440p low settings to give you a broad oversight on what to expect with the RTX 3050. At 1080p competitive, it maxes out the card flat out. So let's try this on real world gameplay and see if we can get the same results. At 1080p competitive, there are occasions where in our RTX 3050 is maxed out 100%. GPU is pretty cool at around 60 degrees. Now, despite maxing out our GPU at 100%, we are already at more than 500 FPS here with pretty stable frame times. VRAM usage is at least in 2 GB, while our CPU is just sitting at 25% usage. I think this is a decent experience and viable for competitive play. Now, if you want to remove the GPU bottlenecks with low settings, we are now running at less than 50% GPU usage and this is fireable for maps like this one, wherein it's mostly close combat. However, our FPS doesn't have much noticeable difference. We're still able to reach 600 plus FPS and frame times remain stable for the most part. Overall, you can pick either competitive or low settings here with the RTX 3050. Low settings obviously gives you the GPU headroom, however, it does make it harder to see enemies on longer ranges, which 
which isn't obvious in this map, unfortunately. In PUBG, we are running low settings here as well. We have only changed anti-aliasing setting here because at low AA, the fences seem to be very distracting in game. Similar to our other games, the RTX 3050 is maxed out at 97% and this game it still runs pretty cool, although only having one fan and our GPU power is now reaching about 130 watts or even more. VRAM usage is only at around 3 gigabytes. Frame rates are pretty good over 130 FPS and sometimes even reaching 160. Frame time seems to be stable here as well. Now let's move on to some vegetation run. FPS seems to be consistent as we're running through the forest here. Similar to our experience earlier. Now let's move on to some action scenes with some smoke dispersion here and we can see that there are definitely frame time spikes here and frame rate definitely has been affected by the smoke going down to 50 now this is an average experience overall on most instances you'd be running decent fps but possibly try to avoid engaging people when there's a lot of heavy smoke as this will affect your fps and pubg Overall, the RTX 3050 is an okay card. It's definitely not the best card in this price range and definitely does not sit on its MSRP. However, if you prefer an Nvidia card and play some of the games we've tested here, it's an okay gaming experience. Just don't buy the premium models of this card because it's kinda like pointless. As you saw from RTX, even with a single fan and a pretty basic card, it ran pretty cool at around 60 degrees. So yeah, if you're interested in building a PC using the RTX 3050 and you're only limited to an $800 budget, we have recently done a video showing which parts to get. So if you like to see that click this video right here and we'll see you guys over there